So I am originally, I guess I could say, uh, was raised, I grew up in Southern California. Uh, my hometown is Del Mar. And I started dancing tap when I was probably six or seven. I'd always wanted to dance and I bugged my parents day in and day out to take classes. And finally, I was like, fine. So she enrolled me in a community class, tap class. Um, and then it slowly progressed into ballet and jazz. Uh, I ended up going to UCLA. I moved to LA for college. My parents were very traditional patients, so I did not study dance in college. I studied business and economics while I was just pursuing dance outside of school. But um, I ended up joining a company in Los Angeles. This is when I date myself back in the 80s, <laughs> 80s and the 90s. Um, so I was dancing there for a while. Um, and then in my late 20s, as the younger dancers were coming in, I just thought, you know, maybe it was my time to step out. And so I actually left dance for a really long time. Um, I pursued um, my business background, so I went into retail, retail marketing and branding. Um, that's what brought me up to San Francisco, actually. I came to work for The Gap. <laughs> and then um, eventually my husband and I settled up here and we started a family. And I left the corporate world and decided just to sort of be a mom. I actually started my own chocolate business. <laughs> For a little while, I know my life has gone through a lot of crazy things. Um, and I didn't really dance. I took classes every once in a while up here in San Francisco. We moved, we moved up here in 2002. And I think I took a few ballet classes at Lines back then. But that only lasted um, a year or two when I got pregnant and had our kid. Started my chocolate business for about seven years. And suddenly, somehow, I came back to dance. Actually, it was because um, I caught an episode of So You Think You Can Dance? which I know sounds ridiculous, but it kind of just spawned something in me, and um, I just said, you know, I want to go dance again, and I actually, my first class back was actually at a local YMCA. I went to ballet there, and um, some of the ladies were all, you should go to City College, they have classes there. And I went there, and I found that they were teaching modern, they actually taught gram technique, which is what I had studied earlier on. I was like, oh my God, this is homecoming. So I got back into dance, I would say, maybe five years ago, and things just sort of started snowballing. You know, I was asked to join the school company. I started teaching. Um, I now teach at a couple of children's studios, and I take classes every morning at ODC, and I've been choreographing and trying to put work out there now, so this is kind of like full circle for me. I actually never had planned on doing a solo piece. I've always done group work. Um, but I took a solo choreo workshop with Katie Faulkner this past summer and we were playing around with some improvisational things and we just did little studies and started piecing nuggets of movements together and something just sort of sparked. I drew on some movement that I used in a film I had made um, a couple years ago that that film was really about sort of voyeurism, like why do we watch people, what makes us look at them, what makes us stop to watch them, why do we keep watching them, when do we finally just say, you know, I shouldn't really be watching this person. Why do I, why do I turn away? Um, and then as I was moving in this choreography workshop, I sort of, even though I was doing some of the same movements, I started really thinking about the person moving and the person being watched. What's it like being watched? And I started thinking, um, you know, especially as a woman in the environment now, we're constantly being looked at, but are we really seen? as the full person that we are, and that kind of came out in the movement as well too. So while I wouldn't say I attempted to um, make a response to this film, it's sort of becoming that. As a woman, and now as a wife and a mother, having been, you know, I don't know how many careers I've now listed that I've gone through in my life, um, realizing that we kind of, t I kind of, I have, at least myself, and my friends too that I've seen, we all take on these roles. You know, you're a career woman, you're working hard, um, you get married, you become wife, uh, you know, you have a kid, I become mother. And I felt like, as I realized I was looking back, that I was constantly taking on these roles. And there have been times, and I realized this even more so when I came back to dance, that you lose yourself in these roles and you can throw yourself into them, and that's kind of what you're perceived as, you know. Uh, walking around, you know, you meet new people and they ask, so what do you do? Oh, well, you know, I'm 
housewife, or I stay at home, this is what I do, I watch my kid, da da da. Or at one time, you know, I was in marketing, I'm a marketing lady, whatever. And it kind of just creates this um, persona of who maybe that you put out there or that people think you are, but then it didn't really explain who I was. And when I came back to dance, I realized that there was so much of me that was still buried or had gotten buried, and I wasn't exposing. And it's funny because I wasn't sure how happy my husband would be when I decided to stop um, really working, working, and um, just to start dancing again. But he said there was such a change in my personality that something else came out. He just saw how happy and more fulfilled I was and more of a rounded person that I had become. And it made me realize a lot of times these roles that you take on um, don't allow everyone to really see the full person that you are. Hi, I'm Joyce Long Kushner, and I'm really excited to be a part of the Lovey Salon this coming November.